Hi, I'm Christina James, and we're here at the 11th annual Ginger Root Wild Food Rendezvous. I'm here with the Director of Wild Food Adventures, Dr. John Kalis, and we're here to talk about some of the roles that wild foods play for our everyday lives and survival. Hi, John, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, um, good. So what is Wild Food Adventures? Well, Wild Food Adventures is uh, the educational branch of the Institute for Edible Wild Plants and Other Forageables. And so there's, there's two phases to what I do. So I'm do, on the research phase, uh, I'm studying edible wild plants and writing about them. And on the other phase, I'm actually teaching normal people about wild foods. So uh, it's education and research going on at the same time. Okay, great. Um, so what type of wild foods will we be seeing here at the festival? And what type of, what type of wild foods do you work with? Um, well, uh, the, the timing is based around the cattail because the cattail has like, you know, four different wild foods that we can get out of it at this time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're gathering all of those. Then we're doing other things like wild sweet peas and we're getting uh, dandelions and amaranth and wild spinach, um, a whole variety of other things, including wild ginger, which is, you know, what the, the ginger root is named after. Right, that's what it's all about. So, so yeah, so we're, we're getting together a lot of wild foods and then we're gonna process it and cook it up and eat it in meal. Right. Um, will you talk a little bit about plant identification? How can you tell when something is poisonous or when something is edible? Well, that's a really good question. Um, when you don't know much about plants, then what happens is is that there's this sort of feeling like if you walk by a poisonous plant, it's going to leap into your mouth and you're going to have to fight it off to get it out. You know, but no, it doesn't work like that. You have to take that and put it in your mouth. And uh, so uh, you really need to know what you're eating before you eat it. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. There is no way to tell a poisonous plant from an edible plant by identification. I mean, you know, you can't just say, well, it's got red hairs, so it's a poisonous plant. It's got white hairs, it's an edible plant. It doesn't work like that. It's, mm -hmm. So without somebody directly showing you what's what, then of course people are gonna be confused and a little worried about it. But again, the poisonous plants are not gonna leap in your mouth. You just need to learn what the edible plants look like. Right. Uh, at our rendezvous, we've just collected nothing but stuff that a normal person would like the flavor of. Mm -hmm. Not somebody with the bitter, loving aspect. So with all the things that we've gathered at the rendezvous, what kind of dishes will be prepared? You know, well, tonight, the first night, uh, uh, um, this is Saturday, what we're going to do is we're just going to do very, very basic preparation of everything. Everybody's tasted everything raw, so they know what that tastes like. So we might uh, saute some of these things or stir fry them or uh, make them in a salad, uh, just boil them, you know, make cooked greens, whatever so that they'll ha just taste the basics. You know, what are these foods like? And when you treat them a certain way, how do they react in terms of flavor and texture and things? Mm -hmm. And then once they get a feel for all of that and are much more familiar with these plants from a food standpoint, from a taste standpoint, then tomorrow we're actually gonna have a big potluck. We're gonna bring more wild foods in. We're gonna use some of the ones that we gather today and, and then everybody is gonna create a, like a normal dish like they would bring to a potluck, except that they have to feature wild foods in each dish. It can't be a minor thing. It can't be, you know, the flavor can't be hidden or anything like that. It's the feature part of the dish. So someone could actually make lasagna, for instance. Instead of using spinach, they, we could use wild spinach or amaranth or something else. Um, but I would say, you know, um, to really feature the spinach, you cut down on the, um, the cheese, you cut down on the pasta a little bit so there's a higher proportion of the wild food in it. So everybody really tastes it. And then, you know, everybody creates their own dish. We have a big potluck dinner and everybody's happy. That sounds really delicious and healthy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Kalis, for the information. And now that we've gathered our wild food, let's go prepare a dish. Sounds good to me.